Hello everybody, welcome to Nadia Collectibles. My name is Nadia, thank you so much for being here. Today we're gonna to be talking about my controversial opinions when it comes to anime figures. We'll be talking about some figures that I'm not a huge fan of, and we'll also be talking about some figures I have in my collection that I think are really underrated. As always, my opinions are completely subjective. Please don't take any of my opinions the wrong way. We all have different opinions. You might like a figure that I might not be a fan of, or you might not like a figure that I really like. That's one of the best things about this hobby. I feel like these type of videos kind of bring out like like the conversation behind figures where like I might like a figure and you might not have liked it but somebody bringing the positive out of that figure might make you appreciate it more. It's like talking through things really helps me to appreciate the figures I currently have. That's kind of why I've been doing a lot of videos where like I talk about the bad and good of my collection because I want to appreciate the stuff I currently have. It's always really fun to get in new figures and talk about those but it's definitely good to like sit down and just look around and see what you already have and then just talk about the goods and bads. You know what I mean? With that, let's just go straight into the video. Kind of controversial opinion that I feel like I have is that I love prize figures. I feel like with collecting, a lot of the time we always have this impulse to buy something new. I feel like prize figures kind of satisfy that desire to buy something new without breaking the bank. And I think they're just really nice additions to your collection. You can get some figures of characters that you love. For example, I'm trying to complete the set of all the prize figure blue lock figures because I love blue lock. They are coming out with a lot of different scale figures, but they're really expensive. I feel like it's really easy to get caught up in like the whole hype of scale figures and expensive new figures and resin statues because there's so many things coming out and it's so hard to keep up and it's not sustainable. But when you just take a second to look at some prize figures of some characters that you love, you can fulfill that desire without breaking the bank. The quality sometimes obviously is not the best with prize figures, but if you really love a character and they have a prize figure and you're just not in a place to buy like a $150 figure, there's alternatives. My current entire Haikyuu collection is, a, is all prize figures. I really love like these noodle stopper or break time figures like this Kuroko figure. I, I just think they're really nice. And my entire Dr. Stone collection is pretty much prize figures and then some figure arts zero figures it's so easy to compare your collection to other people's collection and be like oh like this person has this scale figure that means i should probably get it because people might look down on me for buying the prize figures you it's such a toxic way of thinking a lot of prize figures are just really well done this noodle stopper from ayakashi triangle they're just really nice like additions to your collection like i have this one just sitting on one of my shelves and it makes my shelf look a little bit more complete the biggest thing with anime figure collecting is comparing your collection to somebody else's collection and i did that a lot when i first started collecting and it definitely took a huge toll on me like mentally with my bank with like every aspect of my life it really takes a toll on somebody to comparison is a thief of joy they say and that's how i feel figure collecting in general is really addicting and i know like sometimes i, I like Pretty much every day I have a desire to buy something new. I will look at some prize figures and instead of spending a hundred, two hundred dollars on a figure, I'll spend 20 bucks and I'll be like, okay, cool, new figure for my collection, I'm happy. It's just cool to have a bunch of figures that make you feel better at the end of the day because you look at the figure and you're like, okay, I only spent like 15, 20 dollars on that figure. I feel a little bit better about it instead of buying a figure when you had that impulse to buy something for $200 and it put you in a tight position. I don't know. I really like prize figures. I have a lot of prize figures. I will continue to buy prize figures. There's a lot of really good figures. Not a sustainable hobby if you're buying scale figures every week. For me, buying prize figures is like therapeutic, kind of. I just think it's important to appreciate stuff like prize figures or just your current collection in general and not have to worry about keeping up with the latest trends when it comes to figures. Just appreciate your current collection and that's it. The type of figure that I think is severely underrated are busted. Statues. I know a lot of people don't really like bust statues. Everybody likes a completed uh, body for the, the characters that they love, but I've always been a huge fan of bust statues. I've said it so many times. Usually for me, the most important thing of a figure is the face sculpt and a bust statue pretty much just focuses on the face. So it's perfect for me. So I have the completed line of the Blue Sky Studio Demon Slayer line, and it's one of my favorite sets ever. I don't need the legs for this one. I think that as it is, it's perfect. This is an example of a more intricate bust. There are of course some more like basic ones, which I'll show in a second, but like stuff like this, I feel like it's so beautiful. I just think they're really underrated. I think a lot of people just don't like bust statues because it feels like incomplete. But for me, it feels very much complete. But we're gonna look at some examples where this might not be the case, but I still can appreciate a bust statue. So here's another example of a bust statue that I think is really intricate, but it may be more simplistic than the Blue Sky Studio line. This is the Hisoka bust by FF Studio. I have their Kilua bust on pre-order as well, and I still need to pre-order Kurapikas. I just am a big Hunter Hunter fan. It's very simplistic. It's a lot smaller. This always falls down. I don't know why. Little 
It's like a mini Hisako that's just at the bottom. Small, it's lightweight. I think it's easy to just put anywhere. So I think they're really underrated. I think they just look really good in anybody's collection, even just between a couple figures. Like if I had five, six Hunter Hunter statues, I could just put this in front and this would be my Hisako piece. And here we have an example of very simplistic bust statues. So this is the Surge Studio 1-4 scale Tsunade bust. It's very small. It's supposed to be a 1-4 scale, but I think they just scale a lot smaller than other studios. So I'd say it's like more like a 1-6 scale. I just put this Tsunade bust anywhere in my Naruto figure collection and it's just nice representation of Tsunade. It's like exactly what I wanted. The face looks amazing and again that's the most important thing to me. I can see why people wouldn't like Bust because at the end of the day it's half of the character or like less than half in this example. She has no arms or legs but I think more people should collect Bust statues. It definitely opens up a more wider variety of figures that you can buy. There's so many Bust statues of so many characters out there and they're just really well done. I think this is a good example of a simple but perfect bust statue. They're really pretty, they're really nice, and I love them. Okay, so we're gonna talk about probably my most controversial opinion. One of the figures we'll be talking about today is the Kirara 1-4 scale bunny by Binding. She's from the Right to Series, and I think she is underrated. I think that's very controversial. I know a lot of people don't agree with me. I had to put a like bandana thingy around her chest. She's not my favorite character from the Right to Series, and she's not my favorite bunny from the Right to Series either. Yui and Erica are my favorite from the series, but I definitely don't think that she is the worst. The reason why I think she's very underrated is because I think she has one of the most beautiful suits on a bunny figure. I love the blue color of her suit so, so much. I love how unique her bunny ears are as well. But she just has a lot of detail to her and she's the only bunny figure from the right to set with painted nails. Her nails are a beautiful like green color. I just don't think that she's the worst of the set. I definitely can see why people wouldn't like her mouth. You definitely could have added some gloss to her lips, but I really do think overall she has a really pretty face. Definitely not the best best Kirara figure out there. I have the 1-6 scale Kirara figure by Native as well and I think that one is so much better. I just see a lot of people that collect all the right to bunnies and they always just leave her out. She is probably the lowest in the aftermarket and I think that pe more people should pick her up. In general I feel like right to figures are kind of like an acquired taste. They have some wild proportions but I do think they're really beautiful and really unique characters. I love my right to set is probably my favorite like bunny figure set in my whole collection and I think that Kirara has a really beautiful bunny. I think now in the aftermarket She's about 20,000 yen on Ami Ami. She kind of hikes up and then goes down and goes back up a lot. We seen with Native, they're redoing Misa's bunny. So maybe they'll do a redo of Kirara's bunny as well. I know a lot of people weren't happy with it, but yeah, I think she's really pretty. I think she'd make a great addition to anybody's collection and I think she's underrated. So I wanted to talk about her a little bit. The next thing we're gonna be talking about is a controversial opinion and this is Nendroids versus the Fig Arts minis. I'm not a huge fan of Nendroids in general, but I do own Nendroids. I have a bunch of Nendroids in my collection and I only buy Nendroids if they're of characters that don't have a lot of figures or if I just really like the Nendroid. The reason why I don't like Nendroids so much is because I get stressed out really, really easily and <laughs> unboxing Nendroids and setting up Nendroids is just a big ball of stress and that's pretty much how I feel, I guess. I used to have a lot of Nendroids. I had like all the One Punch Man ones. I had Komi, Miyamura. I had a bunch and I gave them all away. I think it kind of ruins your experience of unboxing figures when you end up like sweaty. That's like the whole thing for Nendroids for me. I really do like them though. Like I have Senku's Nendroid, of course. I have Gen. I'm gonna continue collecting all of the Dr. Stone Nendroids because I feel like they don't have a lot of at least skill figures. There's lots of prize figures for Dr. Stone. But I brought Fig Arts Minis into this because I think they get the same job done as Nendroids do and they're a lot easier to assemble and just display in general. And I think they look really good. I love the chibi aspect of Nendroids, but this is a more like realistic interpretation of it. It's like it's still a chibi figure, but like they're taller and they look more, I don't know, more more realistic, I guess. I know a lot of people love Nendroids. I think the more you collect them, the easier it is to assemble them. So I just haven't collected a lot, so I just, <laughs> it never got easy for me. But yeah, I kind of just halted my Nendroid collecting because I was already stressed out unboxing resin statues and putting those together. And then Nendroid's the top of it. I was just like, oh my God. If I could choose which ones I want to collect, I'd probably collect more of the Fig Arts Minis. A, because they're cheaper. And then B, because they're a lot easier to assemble. They're really good accents like Nendroid's in your collection. For me, figure collecting is all about ease and comfort when unboxing things. I feel like when you have a bad experience experience assembling something it kind of ruins the figure for you a little bit i know that happens to me a lot where i like i'm super frustrated putting a figure together and then when i look at it i'm just like what did you do to me like i just get really like 
uh, frustrated and I feel like it kind of just ruins the figure. So I kind of just wanted to avoid that. So I pretty much just stopped collecting Nendroids. I cannot get myself to buy a bunch of Nendroids. I know how I get, I know how easily I get upset. So I just like avoided that by just giving the Nendroids. Oh my god. I just want to avoid all the possibility of me not liking a figure by just not buying it. If I know it's gonna bring me stress, I just don't buy it. Like, I don't dislike Nendroids. I think Nendroids are super cute and I think the collections that I see with like hundreds of Nendroids, like they're the coolest thing in the world. They're really nice for somebody else's collection is what I feel like. I just don't want to be mad at my figures at the end of the day and with Nendroids I usually walk away like Ugh. I just try to avoid it by simply not buying it. Sorry, I know a lot of people love Nendroids. I love Nendroids, but just not for my collection and not for my mental sanity. So the next type of figures we're gonna be talking about is bear leg bunnies. I briefly touched upon my opinion on bear leg bunnies in my figure regrets video. And I kind of wanted to go off of that conversation. So here we have two bear leg bunnies. It's the Rem and Rom kneeling bunnies. And I preferred the bear leg for these two. I could have bought the fishnets for this set, but I thought the bear leg looked nicer. So there are cases like this where even with the dark suit, I still prefer the bear leg. It's a lot easier to display these two with the bear legs because I can move them around and not have to worry about the fishnets tearing. Since they're kneeling bunnies, their legs are always just on the ground. And I have to worry about like the tights getting caught on anything and I don't need to worry about it with these two. I think they look really gorgeous just with the bear leg and they were really cheap with the bear leg as well. We're gonna talk about a very controversial set where I actually prefer the bear legs and that is the high school DXD bunnies. So we have Konako and Rias. Just because I feel like it looks uncomfortable for them to have fishnets, kind of. Konako's fishnet version has black tights and she has a white suit. And I feel like in cases like that where the suit is white, I feel like they should have either no tights or white tights. I remember in my last video, I was talking about the Food Wars bunnies and I said that I preferred the fishnet versions of Erna and Rindo. When it comes to kneeling and sitting down bunnies, I think the bear leg a lot of the times is the better alternative. Of course, that's not always my opinion. It varies from figure to figure. So on that same topic, we have two examples of fishnet bunnies. We have the 1-4 scale Yuna bunny by Freeing. Then we have the 1-4 scale White Queen bunny by freeing as well. In the case of Yuna, I feel like she would have looked amazing with a set like this where she has the white fishnets and a white suit, but they ended up doing for her original release the black fishnets. I think the bear leg for Yuna probably looks nicer. If I never had her before the bear leg went up for pre-order, I would have not gone for this one. I probably would have pre-ordered the bear leg. If they have a light suit like this, if it doesn't have white tights, then I think the bear leg normally looks better. In the case of White Queen, I think this is perfect. I think this is what they should do for every instance where they have a lighter suit. It makes the figure look more aesthetically pleasing. I don't think it's an L if you collect a bear leg over the fishnet version, because a lot of the times it's monetary as well, where the fishnet version is super expensive in the aftermarket versus a bear leg, which is 200 or less dollars. And 99% of the time the bear leg prices drop a bit after release. I don't have like a very solid or compelling argument when it comes to bear leg bunnies. I kind of just see it as it is. My opinion varies from figure to figure. It's never like, oh, I prefer the fishnet with this color suit or I prefer the bear leg with this color suit. It varies from figure to figure. We see that with Rias versus Erna. I think the fishnet version looks better with Erna and I think the bear leg version looks better with Rias, even though they both have a black suit. My opinion on bear legs is not just because of money. Of course, that's a huge factor of why I prefer the bear legs sometimes because the fishnet can get really expensive but most of the time it's just what is more aesthetically pleasing to me. Another figure that I feel like is very underrated is Bountiful Year by Binding. Originally when this figure went up for pre-order the price was around 66,000 yen so it was very very expensive and the shipping for this figure is very expensive as well but since that pre-order period it has definitely tanked a lot in the aftermarket. Now it's on AmiAmi pre-owned for like less than 40k. Of course AmiAmi shipping is really crazy so it probably would be around the same price as the pre-order price but I feel like not enough people are talking about this figure. It is such an amazing figure overall, even just from the character's sculpts. This is pretty much two figures in one, kind of, is how I see it. And I feel like a lot of people just like, oh, uh, I don't know. I just feel like this figure is really underrated. It was one of those like must-haves in my collection when I saw it. I didn't pre-order it. I ended up getting it pre-owned on AmiAmi, and I think it's just one of the most beautiful pieces in my collection. They have so many accessories and they're so beautiful. I love their faces so much. The color of their hair is so pretty as well. Their hair sculpts are amazing. Their outfits are amazing. I just feel like they don't get enough love. Obviously their price is really scary and I just take into consideration the fact that it's pretty much two figures in one. So 
with current with today's current prices um normally figures are around 33,000 yen for a one four scale and these two now that they've tanked a lot in the aftermarket they're 40,000 for two figures so like 20,000 each i definitely am keeping an eye out on more figures done by this illustrator for the for yuri and stella the box is huge too it just feels like a very like prestigious figure i guess it also comes with a really beautiful acrylic stand of stella and yuri and i just think it's a really beautiful figure overall i feel like the aftermarket will continue to drop so maybe just waiting a couple months before you decide to buy them would be a good option i definitely didn't i'm very irresponsible as you guys know but yeah i just feel like these two deserve a little bit more love than what they currently get they're one of the most beautiful figures i feel like binding has ever done i feel like they're pretty slept on i think they're just an amazing set of figures and i really love them so for me this is another example of some figures that i have in my collection that i feel like just deserve some more love you know thank you so much for watching my video today i hope you enjoyed it if you did go ahead and give it a like subscribe if you'd like to as well and i'll see you guys later goodbye